so in this video we'll discuss about the laterally unsupported beam that is so design a ssb that is simply supported beam of a span 3.5 meters subjected to a factor load that is bending moment and uh, factor load that is bending moment of 470 kilonewton meter and the shear force of 180 kilonewton the beam is laterally unsupported so the design step is similar to that of the laterally supported case the very first step is to calculate the effective length which will provide the half of the thickness of the wall so it comes as 3.73 meter the second step is to find the total load acting on the uh, member but in our case the question has given us the m max and v max directly so we don't have to calculate that total load in the previous video if you see the step was to calculate the total load and with the total load we have to calculate the m max for which we had the formula m max is equal to wl square by 8 okay and for v max we had the formula as p by 2 plus wl by 2 but in our case point load is 0 so wl by 2 we took into consideration so the th second step is to calculate the total and total load and the third step was to calculate the bending moment maximum bending moment and maximum shear force but in our case the equation has already given now the third step is to determine the section modulus section modulus can be determined by the formula zp is equal to md this is the maximum bending moment multiply by gamma m0 this is partial factor of safety divided by fy which is the yield stress and uh, for this case you take fe 410 so y will be fy will be 250 then you will get the value zp required now in the steel table provide a, a section with the zp or section modulus greater than this value so in the table so go to table 46 and search for the zp value greater than this so we have 2068 and i have already said we will provide mb section for our simplicity so zp 2068 so the value should be greater than 2068 so i provide ismb 60 with zp as 3510.63 centimeter cube okay so zp providing and ismb 600 now list out the table okay that is d diamond uh, dimension that is left of section width of the flange radius uh, tf that is the thickness of flange tw thickness of the wave Finally, we will collect section modulus plastic modulus ixx iyy now the fourth step or we can say fifth step if we combine two and three the next step is the slack section section classification okay in section classification you will introduce two ratios that is b by tf and d by tw b is the outstand flange width okay so if this is the flange portion okay and this total is b f that is width of the flange now half of width of flange is the outstand width that is b then we'll calculate the this is the depth of the wave so h is the total depth of the section divide in you know, subtracting twice of the flange width tf okay plus r1 is the curve it will have, it will be a curve section and the radius of this curve is r1 on both side we have so it comes as 519.4 mm okay this is also in mm now we'll calculate these two ratios b by tf and d by tw which should be less than 9.4 epsilon and 84 epsilon respectively for our plastic condition we will assume a plastic condition okay so plastic condition is nothing if the load application is removed then the deformation will remain this is the main criteria we will assume in our selection in our design now the next step is the calculation of shear strength we know the formula for shear strength this is the design shear strength okay it should be greater than the v max v is equal to a v this is the shear area and in case of i section the shear area will be the wave area so a v multiplied by f y divided by under root 3 gamma m naught so provide a v as the shear area that is wave area the thickness of the wave is 12 mm and the overall depth of the wave is 
equal to D. So 600 multiplied by 250. So we get this as 944.75, which should be greater than the Vmax because this is the design shear strength. Now the next step is to calculate design bending moment capacity or design bending strength. For this you have to look page number 54. You have the formula for design bending strength that is MD is equal to beta B Z P F B D. Now all these factors has to be calculated. Beta B will be 1 for plastic section. So it will it is easier for us to take 1. So we consider a plastic section. Similarly Z P is the section modulus plastic modulus okay and uh, FBD is the design bending compressive strength stress which is uh, obtained by this equation FBD is equal to chi LT FY by gamma M naught chi LT is the bending shear reduction factor which is obtained by this equation okay so chi LT will be calculated by with the help of phi so for phi we have this formula and phi depends upon alpha and lambda alpha is taken as 0.21 for rolled steel section which we will prefer that is rolled steel section and lambda lt is calculated with the help of mcr okay other terms are known to us that is beta b zp fy okay we have to calculate mcr and for mcr we have two different cases one is the cases for simply supported beam which we have a simply supported beam and this equation is applicable for the weld section okay now you can see e, uh, e is the modulus of elasticity okay iy is the moment of inertia about y axis which we have taken from the table llt this is the effective length okay for this i will discuss while doing this llt is the effective length g is the modulus of rigidity iw is the warping constant and it is the torsional constant the equation for mcr the very first case you have to understand we have a symmetrical case okay for symmetrical case moment of inertia about the compression in flange and about the tension in the flange will be equal so going to page number 129 you will see the constant we have to find warping constant torsion constant and for warping constant we have to find the value of beta f and beta f is equal to ifc divided by IFC plus IFT where IFC and IFT are the moment of inertia of compression and tension flange so the section is symmetrical about the axis of axis for both flanges so uh, moment of inertia about the tension in flange and about compression in flange will be equal that gives us beta as equal so it will be 1 by 2 FC by FC giving 0 0.5 now we can calculate the value of IW. In code also you can see beta f is equal to sorry IW is equal to 1 minus beta f beta f i y h y square. We know all the terms except h y. So h y is the distance from the center of the upper flange and lower flange. Okay. So it will be 600 minus 20.3. 20.3 is the overall distance of the or thickness of the flange. So we can calculate the value of IW. Now IT is equal to summation of breadth into thickness cube divided by 3. Now we have two flanges and one wave. So for the case of flange, it is multiplied by 2 and B is the width of the flange that is 210 we have listed from the table multiplied by the thickness of the flange that is 20.3 divided by 3. Okay, this is cube plus for case of the wave. Now the wave will be considered from we have already done we have already uh, evaluated the wave area flange area now we have to calculate for the wave area so the wave area is 600 minus this is the overall of the minus 2 into 20.3 this is the two flanges with thickness multiplied by the thickness of the wave that is 12 cube by 3 then we'll get value of it now then we have gt uh, we have g then we have g which is the modulus of rigidity and it is calculated by the formula e divided by 2 i plus 0 0.3 okay here you can also see mu mu is equal to 0 0.3 then e is provided as 2 into 10 to the power 5 that is modulus of elasticity and i is taken as 1 so we get the value for g as 276923.07 newton per mm square llt llt is the effective length you can see so for effective length you have to look at table number 15 at page number 58 
our both cases are torsional restraint and warping restraint okay so fully restrained and both flanges fully restrained so we will take the loading condition as normal and it will be 0.7 l okay so the value of k is 0.7 putting the value of 0 uh, k as 0.7 and effective length l is 3.73 then we get the value as 2.6 meter now substitute the value in mcr for every constant or every variable then you will get the value for mcr okay then go to page number 54 again now the finding is in the reverse order okay you see if you if you see mcr we will find then we will find lambda lt for lambda lt we need mcr so we will find the lambda lt here okay for lambda lt is equal to 0 0.603 so I have uh, done it here now. Alpha LT, if we see in the table, phi LT we have just calculated. Okay, phi LT has been just been calculated. Alpha LT is taken as 0 0.21 for rolled section. We are using rolled steel section, not welded steel section. Okay, and uh, phi LT then can be calculated with the help of alpha LT 1.5. We can see here 1 plus alpha uh, 0 0.5. Okay, here you have to multiply 0 0.5. Then we'll get the value of phi LT. Then chi LT is dependent on the phi. So 1 by phi LT. Substituting the value of phi, we will get the value of chi LT, which should be less than 1. Then FFD. The formula for FFD is chi LT FY by gamma M0. I have just written the value directly over here. So you can just put it down here and make sure. If any mistake, then please do write in the comment section so others can find out easily. And then md which will be equal to beta b zp fbd beta b is equal to one for plastic section zp which we have taken for the section and ffd which will be uh, given by this formula okay which will be given by this formula so in this way we have find the design strength now the step will be the same for design uh, check okay that is the check deflection check deflection check Delta is equal to 5 by 384 uh, WL4 by 3 EI, okay, EIX, you have to understand that. MX, WL square by 8, that is maximum bending moment, which we have calculated there. Now, on factor W, del max, we can put the value here. Make sure the value of W, okay, in this question, what we have been provided, we have been provided with it directly, the value of maximum bending moment. Now from that we can find the value of W. This W should be such that uh, unfactored, okay. I am trying to say that during calculation of deflection you will take the unfactored load and it should be the live load. But in this case it is not uh, suggested or it is not uh, written in the question that it is a, a live load so we consider it as a live load and it should be unfactored so unfactored load 180 so 5 by 384 into 180.6 and then we'll get the delta max deflection max and then for permissible we have spanned by 300 and how this can uh, come you can check in my previous video and then for wave buckling okay then for we come to wave buckling this ratio should not be greater than 67 epsilon uh, this condition is satisfied so there is no wave buckling check and in step 11 you have to uh, do wave crippling check wave crippling check uh, is done on the basis of two cons two variables that is n1 and b here b1 is the stiffness bearing which is provided as uh, 100 and n1 is equal to 2.5 multiplied by tf plus r1 okay tw plus r1 so N2 is equal to 2.5 T TF plus R1 then you will get the value of N1 also and to check whether we, for the wave crippling we have formula FW is equal to FW is equal to B1 plus N2 multiply by FYW okay FYW TW by gamma M0 then it should be less than okay this value shear uh, maximum shear should be less than FW in order to prevent from wave crippling. Uh, so in this way this chapter flexor member is completed. I hope you have understood.